happen to be absolutely unsurmountable and for some time the examinations were just deferred and we have had the um, changes which were thought about and implemented subsequently were in the minds of so many people everyone contributed their own views but then on the horizon came dr bhavendra lal who joined the national board of examinations as its executive director and guided the conduct of dnb not only in the examination but in all aspects beautifully steered away from all traditions and he there was no other way we started this new pattern of holding a virtual exam physicality involved in that the candidates would be present in front of the examiners the mobility of examiners would be totally restricted and therefore all these changes which came about were implemented in the last two examinations that were held i uh, would like uh, dr pavaninder lal to take over now after uh, dr vinod malik may have a comment or two to to explain to all the audience how it happened and what is the future <coughs> hello uh, it's indeed a pleasure you know to be a part of this uh, program uh, dr lal has been uh, bringing about uh, tremendous changes in the way the examination is being conducted as has been very elaborately described by dr vijay rora i of course we would have some questions from dr lal at the end of his presentation i would uh, also like him to uh, sort of uh, tell us about uh, the possibility of continuing with these programs and what amount of uh, oski based examination will remain once the pandemic based uh, limitations are over so over to you professor lal for your deliberations uh thank you very much dr vijay arora sir and uh, professor malik uh, very kind introduction and thank you for your comments uh yes indeed uh, as i have always been saying that uh, myself and covid uh, came together to the national board on the 1st of april and uh, the immediate uh, challenge was to deliver uh these nationwide examinations in a very uniform visible and yet merit based manner so that uh, we are able to give a credible result and uh, proceed with the necessity of uh, giving the option opportunity to the candidates to make their exit so it was a very challenging situation in the first 3 months we were uh, completely in the process of making policies and then as the policies became fine you will be very uh, glad to know that we were able to roll out these modified exams in the month of july and august just 3 months after the uh, lockdown had been uh, declared and uh, literally and we uh, the first phase included 3500 candidates across the country across various specialties we had to modify the way we uh, examine and uh, then the second so first diet we introduced is was for the dnb candidates because they have no other degree and the second uh, candidates which we have are already ms or md qualified who take the dnb exit exam as a additional qualification there was no uh, hurry to take their exam so we staggered this second group and conducted their exam in november and december so in the first phase Uh, we have now completed two stages of exams one for our dnb candidates in july and august and in the second phase for the um, ms md qualified candidates uh, in the month of november and december and they are all uh, you know uh, reached and their results have actually been declared as i as we uh, speak today uh, because of the covid conditions still prevailing uh the answer to dr malik's question would be we may have to continue this in the first 6 month of the uh the year uh because the volume of cases is still limited many of the centers do not have their clinical cases 
post operative cases are also not there and therefore we will have to take a little bit of a variance to uh, come back to the normal physical examination which definitely remains the uh, way to go forward although there is a, a lot of talk about some component of oski to still continue even outside the uh, covid situation and i am sure this will be deliberated again as we um, you know face the situation so i'll quickly share the first presentation which is uh, on the modified pattern of examinations and uh, so this revised pattern which will be executed now it has now been changed to the one which you have delivered dr arora and dr malik it has had a little bit of a change the oski component uh, consists of 25 stations of 6 marks each the time duration is now 4 minutes and 150 marks are coming from this instead of 200 marks from the first uh you know uh, uh exam that we did uh there will be a viva voce component of 40 marks uh so four vivas are there and then there are two cases of 35 marks each of which one case will still remain a virtual case which will be sent by the national board to the candidate to the centers and the second case now will have to be definitely a real case which will be rt pcr negative confirmed and uh, skills of the candidates will be measured on this case it will have to be a skill based case assessment and uh, the second case is where basically where the skills are being assessed and what has been added now is the ward rounds so post operative ward round will be there for real cases once again four cases will have to be there again rt pcr proven negative and 40 marks will be added and so 150 marks will come from the uh, physical exam and 150 marks will come from the oski component comprising total of the 300 marks and the candidate must secure 150 out of 300 total to pass the exam so as you are aware candidates are supposed to report in the morning at every center and then uh, the exam runs the oski runs in the first part in the second part there is viva voce and in the third part there is a clinical case exam of the two cases and the ward rounds so this is the detailed uh, you know kind of situation uh, for the candidates is important to know those who have not been through this exam that the all the uh, answer sheets are given prior to every candidate while they are seated in the center they can fill up their roll numbers and their signatures are already done and they have to only start writing once the uh, oski is started from the national board at new delhi uh, it is like a powerpoint presentation and i will be showing that kind of a presentation in a separate presentation just now for the convenience for all the candidates and uh, this is the same time it is running in the entire country so that is the beauty about it all candidates in the entire country are seeing this oski together and answering this oski together so uh, the time allotted is displayed on the screen the question of the oski can be in one slide it can be in two slides it can be in three slides it can be in four slides so this is another change that is coming up we may have four parts to one station of one minute each so that there is a precise question and a precise answer and uh, oski questions which are once shown they do not come back so once the station goes away from you the sheet is also taken away by the candidate by the examiners and the sheet cannot come back to you in fact it is scanned and sent to the national board every 15 minutes so it is not even there the paper has actually reached the national board office so uh, there is no requirement for any movement of the candidates you are all required to sit in the hall uh, watching the screen and instead of the physical oski where the candidates move physically from one station to the other here in this kind of an oski the uh, candidate remains seated but the station is moving in front of you uh, as a next slide just i am moving as i am moving the slide this is the type of answer sheet that is given and it just shows for example that dnb anesthesiology was done in gangaram on 21st of july so 
this is the model one of the just a type of answer sheet you are supposed to put your roll number all the 25 station number sheets are given to you so you write your stations 1 to 25 put your signature and then you are supposed to write the answers only in the front part of this sheet and the lower part is for the examiners who will be evaluating it against a standard key that has been prepared so um that is very straightforward you need to be all candidates who propose to give their exam in the coming uh, few months must make sure that you are uh, we do a webinar with all of you so we will we have been doing the webinar with all the candidates this is a presentation which i have taken out from the webinar conducted for the candidates so everyone is informed the way we are conducting it we also show sample oski questions in that webinar so there is nothing to hide only thing is that you should know the style of the examination because we want to be very objective about it and the whole idea is to give you thought provoking questions so coming to the viva voce there are four viva voces of 5 minutes duration and there is 10 marks per viva station every candidate has got one individual examiner and there is independent marking of the station by the examiner no questions are sent by the national board so the candidate uh, the the examiners are free to uh, ask the questions that they want but the topics are defined one is surgical pathology one is radiology one is operative and instruments and one is recent advances and research methodology so we have declared the paper to all of you you all know that this is the way it is going to be asked but it will be on specimens the specimens may be there in the form of a actual specimen or the specimen may be there in the form of a slide picture on a on a laptop image similarly radiology can be on a image in the in the on the laptop operative and instruments normally are there as actual instruments because we want you to you know select the instruments hold the instruments and uh, um then the recent advances and research methodologies of of course it is kind of a viva voce on more theoretical level so uh, with that i will go to the uh, example of a uh, another presentation if i just can borrow a minute from with your permission Uh, are you able to see the question here on the screen yes yeah so this is the actual question from the last exam and uh, we will just go through this question a 30 year old male presents to the emergency with complaints of abdominal pain of 2 days duration the pain started in the epigastric region and uh, radiates to the back the patient gives history of binge drinking of alcohol 3 days back now the question says what is the most probable diagnosis so now here the examination key may keep only one diagnosis and it is likely to be acute pancreatitis and if you write chronic pancreatitis you get a zero if you write pancreatitis you get a zero if you write acute cholecystitis you get a zero and like that so it has to conform to the exact key name two investigations that will help to establish the diagnosis if you write liver function test you get a zero if you write hemogram or cbc you get a zero so you have to be specific to the investigation that will nail the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis it is actually very clear that it is going towards pancreatitis because in this question there is a leading question coming 
enumerate any four scoring systems used for assessing the prognosis of this condition actually this is a bad question because the third question is giving you the answer to the first question because you know acute cholecystitis does not have a scoring system acute uh, uh, duodenal ulcer perforation doesn't have any scoring as such so we avoid leading questions but where possible where things are uh, permissible we give you all the best so you have to give four scoring systems and that could include glasgow ranson or uh, the other uh, acute phase reactant uh, uh, acute phase uh, uh, and chronic health evaluation apache or whatever and then enumerate five etiologies now what people do people will give five correct etiologies and people will give three wrong ones now three wrong ones will get you a wrong mark from the new pattern because that exposes your wrong answer so please give the correct etiology giving a wrong answer does not fetch you a mark it takes away your mark from a correct etiology so it's not a it is a kind of a negative marking based evaluation system from now onwards list five local complications of this condition now you just cannot give any five local complications we need need to think what are the local complications and then give your answer about the complications so after this station is over you will have to write these in the 4 minutes that are provided this is a older one for it was 5 minutes and 8 marks each the marks are already decided the key is already decided the evaluation of the oski is done according to the key available with the examiner one examiner evaluates only one station so he is not doing several stations he is doing only one station so there is there is a very proper intensive checking behind this process so after this is over you get 15 seconds break to complete the sheet and give it to the invigilator and you get ready for the next one and this is the next one and it shows the question and image is there now what another change that is going to happen is more images are going to come and more videos are going to come so uh, which procedure is being carried out here what step is being shown in the procedure which landmark is depicted with the horizontal yellow line name the structure marked with the blue arrow name the structure marked with the yellow arrow and describe strasburg classification for bile duct injuries so very clear question examiners are all here many examiners are looking at this oski and you can see how difficult it is to create an oski and how we have to make it thought provoking exercise because it has to replace the clinical examination so this particular one is for the knowledge of anatomy and therefore it has been introduced to make sure that we are able to evaluate the length and breadth of the spectrum of surgical knowledge from surgery to physiology to pathology to all the various types of clinical cases and uh, complete the whole spectrum and then this is a case which is of a, a very simple straight forward case a 40 year old female patient presents with a history of a swelling in the front of the neck since 10 years she is complaining of intolerance to cold and weight gain since the last 1 to 2 years ample history is there to give you an idea what the uh, basis of thought process is required to be uh you know uh shown so what is the provisional diagnosis name any two important physical signs that you will look for in this case so very easy kind of a situation name three important investigations to confirm the diagnosis and name name two indications for doing surgery in this case so likewise there will be uh situations where there will be not only that but there will be some instrument shown also and i'll try to show for example here some knots are being shown and these have to be you have to be told what type of a knot which type is it is it is a reef knot it is a surgeon's knot is it a a single throw is it a double throw and like that so various kinds of uh, uh, situations can be asked now this is a case very simple of an intraoperative view of a 50 year old male patient underwent a laparoscopic procedure for right inguinal hernia this is an intraoperative view of the same patient 
identify the structures A, B, C, and D. So people who have done their work in the operative room and done a good amount of transabdominal, preperitoneal, or totally extraperitoneal hernia repair will be able to identify that A is referring to the inferior epigastric artery, D is referring to the Hasselbeck's direct inguinal hernia defect, C is referring to the vas deferens, and B is the cord structures coming. So like that, you will be able to be asked various types of questions. A triangle can be made between B and C, and it can be asked what is triangle of doom, what is the quadrilateral of pain. So there is a huge opportunity by using this medium to go through the length and breadth of the spectrum in a very, in a very uniform manner. You see, the most important thing that is happening is same question, same depth is being asked at the same time to everyone. And time is of essence. So if you can answer this question in four minutes, maybe you don't answer it in four minutes, you could answer in six minutes, but the slide is gone, the opportunity is gone. So it is also very important to be able to answer in a given time span. And uh, therefore, I think uh, what we have, so I would with that end the slide share here. Uh, most of the points that I wanted to say have been done. And uh, what I would like to say is that uh, the recent amendment that we are doing has uh, decreased the OSCE component from 200 marks to 150 marks and increased the practical uh, marks from 100 to 150 in view of two case, uh, views that normal work has started to resume. Uh, we are still now started getting cases and uh, therefore it will be important that uh, students are able to uh, know the uh, they are able to uh, basically uh, get the opportunity to show their skills of examination skills for science in the actual case. No more dummy or mannequin or a healthy human volunteer. It will have to be a real patient. And four post-operative situations, uh, which are uh, you know various types, where post-operative ward round, which has been done today in the scope course so uh, beautifully amplified by various discussions, uh, they will be done. Again, in the post-operative ward round, the situation will be constant for all the candidates in that center, and one examiner will be seated at that center, and the candidates will be rotating across the four stations one by one. We have also uh, maintained at this point of time and requested that all the candidates who are uh, uh, who have done the viva, they are kept separate from the candidates who are uh, waiting for the viva. And those candidates who complete their clinical exam, they are not about allowed to mix with the candidates who are waiting for the exam, so that there is no one who is given any advantage or disadvantage as compared to each other. So uh, with that, uh, I would uh, uh, stop here and uh, thank uh, the organizing committee for this invitation and open out for any discussion uh, uh, which is uh, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pawan, for a very elaborate and clear enunciation of uh, what has started and what are the things which are coming. I must admit at the beginning that some of us may have had some experience in having an OSCE examination of the rotating uh, uh, candidates in stations. But this was the first time that the stations were rotating, the candidates were sitting, and it was the same question asked all over India. And these changes, innovations, have really brought a sense of equality, not only amongst the candidates, but even amongst the uh, examiners. Because some of the examinations are conducted in a manner where there are various people asking different questions. And that varies, you know, the, the marking system. So that uh, balance has now been achieved and it has been beautifully explained to you. And I think for the first time, the examiners as well as the candidates are seeing what the questions are going to be and they should be better prepared. If there are any other question or comments from uh, Dr. Malik or anyone else, you are welcome. Uh, 
Dr. Lal, regarding the war round scenarios, so this would be a real life situation or it will be something which will be uh, sent by the board and on that the candidate will be questioned and examined. Uh, so, sir, at the moment, uh, it will be based on the available cases in the center where the exam is being held. So, post-operative cases, which can be early post-operative or patients who have come back for their follow-up with a surgery, uh, can be given. The whole important thing is some situations that can be discussed in that scenario. So, uh, there are ample opportunities. People have got acute emergency surgery. They have got tubes in their body. And there are various situations that can be uh, can be created uh, with a with a history uh, for that particular station, and uh, evaluation can be done. The whole idea is to find out that whether the candidate has actually performed a post-operative duty, is aware about the various challenges. Will he be a good resident for you? Can you leave him and trust him with your post-operative care as a as a qualified surgeon? Would you be able to have him? as a person looking after your near and dear one, will he be able to look after your mother, father, brother, sister, son and daughter? If it is okay, then please give him a pass mark and welcome him to the fraternity. Uh, one more question. Uh, that is regarding that fourth table, you know, which is uh, recent advances and, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, based upon, uh, you know, candidates understanding on these subjects. So just, uh, at some point in time in the past, we used to have the uh, candidates bringing in uh, their thesis and uh, that would uh, generally form, you know, the basis of questioning that candidate. So I think this table has been very, uh, I would say, empirical, uh, if that's the right word to use. Is there any standard format on that or do you think uh, there is a need to standardize that table? So uh, uh, thank you, sir, for that question. I think it's an important point. Uh, when we announce these next uh, uh, these next uh, course of examinations, uh, what we have been doing at the national board is engaging with all the exam centers, and that is again a very very unique thing. And uh, not only them, but with the national uh, group of uh, coordinators for the OSCE exam. And uh, at that point, uh, we can always decide to uh, structure the recent advance and possibly give suggestive topic, topics to the, uh, to the examiners from where this uh, viva can emanate so that there is more of objectivity and less of imagination left so that one should not be, you know, uh, wasting time there, but we should actually be, uh, you know, very clear about what we have to do. The whole idea about the, uh, about the um, structured uh, questions being given from the national board was, that this is a timed examination. And many times you see if your our timing is not right, five minutes can go back just asking one or two, you know, repetitive questions. Whereas if you are very clear about what you have to ask, you can just shoot questions one after the other in those five minutes, no yes and no, and give a valid point. And this was uh, another thing that uh, over a period of time, we may possibly need to conduct some more workshops so that the examiners also are uh, you know a little bit more comfortable with the way uh, this is being held uh, fortunately or unfortunately the restrictions have not yet completely opened up but as soon as it is possible we will be engaging much more uh, you know uh, much more uh, in uh, in in terms of workshops and things like that <clears throat> thank you very much for this engaging interaction and i think uh, you said it when you said that we need to have workshops for the examiner so that the exam can be conducted in a more balanced and more objective manner. Thank you. One question. Can I ask a question? Yeah, Dr. Yeah. 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 Thank, thank you, Dr. Pavlin, for an excellent pattern which we have uh, come across and you have done a lot of work on it. Uh, one question from me is uh, whether the candidate has to be separately in OSCE and the clinical or it is a combined mass will be deciding it? Uh, it's a combined pass, sir. At the moment, it's a combined pass. And uh, what we have found is uh, we are uh, raising the, you know, the strength of the OSCE is being made more and more stringent in the sense that it should be, uh, it should not, it should lose ambiguity. It should be very precise. 
it should uh, have a clear uh, you know uh, end point of the answer and uh, for that uh, uh, you know a lot of work is required even from the end of our end uh, because oski construction takes hours together to formalize one oski uh, we take uh, we, we have been doing workshops and uh, two three four surgeons who come to make it spend uh, two days continuously working 10 hours to make these 25 oskis out of a pool of say 100 to 150 it is such a hard work and uh, the making the key also has to be very precise we we don't have to have leading questions in the oski question so the answer should not be in the next question and things like that but there are many many opportunities to make because the strength of the oski is the visual format you have a picture and you have a video both can be played and uh, uh, very uh, very uh, interesting uh, questions can actually be uh, designed to evaluate it as a practical component of the exam you see the problem is you the candidate is not with you physically you are replacing the physical component with a screen based evaluation component which is uh, which should which should not become a theoretical recall it should be a practical oriented evaluation so uh, yeah dr prabal i congratulate dr pavan for an excellent work that you are doing and uh, it is uh, it's amazing effort that goes into it uh, i am really i congratulate you for that uh, one question is that are you grading these questions into the level of difficulty so that uh, like that i think is important to have a standardized exam from it the standards might differ from one exam to the other so is there any standardization in terms of difficulty yes that is uh, that is done in all our examinations uh, all the computer based tests and the oskis we have to have a fair number of questions the maximum are from the average difficulty level a uh, very small number in are in the very high difficulty level and very small number are in the uh, easy uh, difficulty i mean easy level that most majority will pass also we have done a very extensive evaluation statistical evaluation we have done a lot of correlation work i put my uh, boys on the job and we have done a lot of correlation between the oski result and the uh, practical result and center to center variation also examiner to examiner variation also because uh, we are getting independent uh, evaluation i must want to say very clearly here that the two uh, the cases that are done we have allowed the examiners to give independent marking they don't have to discuss with each other for a combined marking so um, they, they you can give 10 out of 35 other person can give 20 out of 35 and you know the average mark will be given according to the uh, you know whatever if it is out of 30 then 15 will become the average mark but you Dr. don't have to talk with each other you don't have to discuss with each other you have to just give your independent evaluation and i think that has that is very very important and uh, so where you have a strong difference of opinion with your other examiner don't have to quarrel with him but just put your marks there and uh, you may state the reason on the answer sheet when you are signing for that particular candidate with your remark so that the national board is able to know uh, what is the reason why an examiner gave a low mark that's it that's about it so sir, but dr every... anand kumar want to ask something yes sir yes sir please yes uh, dr lal a wonderful wonderful uh, work you're doing and uh, compliments for all your hard work uh, two questions from my side one is an administrative question the other one is the related to oski the first question what you showed on the oski was uh, literally not an oski question because uh, there was no skill which was tested so uh, modifications of questions of this kind probably is very much uh, required uh, because the, the other question is how do we analyze this psychomotor analysis and communication skill of the candidate based on the current oski so uh, basically sir as you can see oski will never be able to evaluate psychomotor skill psychomotor skill he can only assess is whether he is able to read the question and write it down on the piece of paper that is the only psychomotor skill we can evaluate 
and the communication so, and, the and communication so for the communication skill he is at the center he is uh, being uh, evaluated in the four viva voce he is being evaluated in the virtual case presentation he has to perform skills to show signs in the real skill test he is being shown four ward round cases so there is ample opportunity in the current scenario to evaluate the skills and say whether the person skills are there or not and when i'm saying skill orientation a skill testing on that second case which we are talking about that skill evaluation is is done by two examiner of you know they each do their own set of half and half it's 15 minutes so seven and a half minutes per per examiner one examiner may ask him to see show thyroid examination other examiner may ask him to show abdominal examination or whatever the pathology is there with the patient if he has got a hernia or any lump abdomen or whatever and all the skills of examination uh, which you want to see can be tested however oski has its limitations oski of course has the limitation of uh, evaluating uh, psychomotor and skills and therefore we are trying to but what we are trying to do is not to have rote based uh, evaluation but but actually go for uh, you know interpretative things which are coming from the pay, from the doctor working in the ward and managing situations if he has worked in the ward he should be able to do it so uh, there will be there are certain uh, you know more intensive uh, stations which i was not able to show uh, because i am not privy to showing all the uh, declared uh, questions also but uh, we just showed you a couple of them and some of them the scenario is a moving scenario so this happens what will you do then the next slide comes you did this this is the next parameter now what you will do and then the third slide says this is now what has happened now what do you make of it sequence so uh, actual sequence based so that is where we are saying that more than one slides now for an examiner to make a oski i will invite all thought provoking surgeons here to please send us oski and uh, 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 it is a huge exercise it is a very difficult exercise i would ask you to give only five oskis per faculty and take 10 days for sending us five oskis and that is the only way we will be able to make a good bank about oski bank and once you make the oski you will find out that uh, most commonly we make a um, mcq as an oski and mcq is not an oski so majority when we sent our letters to our examiners they sent us mcqs 90% had to be put into the dustbin without using them at all and only 10% had to be modulated and modified to make it actually uh, you know real thought provoking oski and therefore i am trying to say that we will need to have not one station slide one slide per station but more than one uh, as, as more than one slides because it will be an evolving situation that will be shown and all depends on how intensively and uh, how um, you know uh, 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 how much uh, the uh, examiners have given to make that oski sir i think uh, we can have one last question uh, because it, it's more than 45 minutes we are discussing i think dr probal is also here and this is this is a endless discussion which which we can continue and continue and continue So I think we should sir start with your next session, Dr. Lal, with your permission. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, yes, sir. President Thank is you, sir. here, so I am very uh, pleased to welcome. Uh, yeah, you can just start, and I will then come in. Yeah, Dr. Prabal Nogi, sir. Uh, Dr. Prabal Nogi uh, 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 has to have a his last presentation that is on instruments. Dr. Nogi, sir, can you start, sir? Yes, uh, Tarun. I will not be slide sharing. It will be a live thing. Uh, yeah. I'll have I have all the instruments here with me, and I'll be taking them one by one and uh, showing it around. If if you don't mind, yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, right. So can I uh, can I can I start? Okay. Yes, sir. So we we welcome Dr. Dalvi sir, who is the uh, our ASI president. Uh, he has come here for the validatory function, sir. Welcome, Dr. Dalvi sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Dr. Dalvi, and good evening, Dr. Lal, uh, and my senior teachers, Dr. Anand Kumar, Dr. S. B. Agarwal.